testimony is underway in the latest federal trial connected to the assault on the Capitol. Well, a federal prosecutor says the Proud Boys, quote, took aim at the heart of our democracy on January 6th during opening statements Thursday. Former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tario and four other members of the group are facing multiple charges, including conspiracy to oppose the lawful transfer of presidential power by force. The five defendants have pleaded not guilty to all charges. Joining us now is CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland. Hi there, Scott. So what exactly are prosecutors alleging in this trial and what is the Proud Boys defense? It's quite something. Here we are two years after the U.S. Capitol attack and the biggest trials are now beginning. The most high level charges and some of the largest groups. The Proud Boys case, where trial resumed today, involves an argument from prosecutors that this group plotted and planned and came equipped with a game plan to attack the U.S. Capitol. That they simply didn't get caught up in the moment, but that they were ready to trigger a moment that day. Part of the arguments in opening arguments is as the prosecutors make the case today is that this group was at the forefront of the mob confronting police and in one case a proud boy is accused of smashing open the first window leading the mob the riotous group inside the capitol the defense has made clear what they're going to argue that it wasn't this group of defendants but former president trump who had the idea of moving a crowd, a riotous crowd toward the Capitol, that this group didn't come with guns or ammunition or high octane weapons, so that it's not a provable point that they came ready to attack the U.S. Capitol. Jury selection alone took several weeks in this case. It took two years to bring it to trial. There is an expectation, Michelle and Elaine, this is going to be a marathon trial. I want to shift gears now uh, and talk about uh, the president and his recent recent signature on legislation awarding Emmett Till and his mother a congressional gold medal. What can you tell us about that? Just signed by President Biden. This was actually something that passed the last Congress. One of the final things the previous Congress did was pass legislation through the U.S. House and Senate to posthumously award Emmett Till and his mother Congress's highest honor, the Congressional Gold Medal. Congress has only handed out a few dozen of these. Now, posthumously, will be given to the Till family. It was outgoing Congressman Bobby Rush of Illinois in his final act in office after 30 years who pushed this thing through an otherwise gridlocked Congress. The Senate did so too. President Biden has made it law. We spoke with Emma Till's cousin about what this means to the family. It's one of the highest honors and it's fitting for both my cousin Emmett and my Shiro Mamie Till Mobley. Congressional gold medals were also awarded last Congress to the Capitol Police and D.C. Police for their response to that January 6th Capitol attack. All right, Scott, while we have you, I want to ask about this. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is notably not joining the chorus of lawmakers calling on Congressman George Santos to resign. Why might that be? Well, for now, I think is the caveat we should add to that. He's okay. sticking by George Santos for now. But as an increasing number of members of the House Republican Conference call for Santos's resignation, the pressure on Congressman McCarthy, Speaker McCarthy, is likely to grow. There are a few political realities here, Elaine. The House Republicans have the most tenuous, narrow majority. And George Santos, so far, is a reliable vote for Speaker McCarthy. His absence could be impactful here for the Republican majority. As for Santos, he might like getting the biweekly bi paycheck and having a full-time job. He mm. might not have an incentive to try to stick through this. And for Democrats, kind of dueling interests here. They would have a great chance at winning this seat on Long Island if Santos were to resign, if there were a special election, because this is a district Joe Biden won overwhelmingly in 2020. But, Elaine and Michelle, Democrats are having a field day making George Santos a political punching bag, allowing them to villainize or make a caricature of Republicans. That's particularly useful for a minority party at any point in time. A lot of that going on always has been and always will. Right. Scott, Scott McFarland, thank you so much. Thank you.